This video shows how to install a Calyx E720 shelf. The E720 can be installed on any standard 19 inch or 23 inch equipment rack. The E720 is 13 rack units tall, so select a location with at least 13 RU of space available. Let's go ahead and get started. Unpack the E7 from its box and retrieve the installation hardware. For installation on 23 inch racks, you must use the wider extension brackets. Attach the two brackets to the E7 chassis using eight supplied screws from the kit, four per side. The E720 shelf is heavy. To keep the shelf in proper position during installation, you should first partially install the top two mounting screws on the rack at the desired mounting location. The E7 can then hang on these two screws while you install the remaining screws. First, mark the location for the hanger screws on each side of the rack. Then install the screws to half depth, leaving a small gap between the screw head and the rack. Next, using two people for safety, lift the E7 chassis into position against the rack. Align the top keyholes on the brackets with the two pre-installed screws on the rack, and then carefully hang the chassis on the two screws. Secure the E7 chassis to the rack using at least eight of the supplied mounting screws, four per side minimum. Tighten all hardware to secure the chassis in place. Next, we ground the shelf. At the rear of the E7 shelf, locate the clear plastic safety cover protecting the power terminals. Remove the safety cover by loosening the two thumb screws. Keep the cover nearby to reattach later. Get the supplied ground cable from the kit. Coat the contact surface of the cable's two-hole lug with antioxidant grease, and then connect the lug to the dual post frame ground terminal on the E7 chassis. Install the two supplied KEPS nuts onto the ground posts and hand tighten. Then use a nut driver to securely fasten the lugs in place. Route the other end of the ground cable to the main ground system and terminate per PANI guidelines or local practice. If you are unable to connect to the main ground system and must use a rack frame ground connection instead, then file off all the paint around the bond point on the rack so that there will be a clean metal to metal contact between the lug and rack frame with no paint present. Coat the surfaces with antioxidant grease and securely attach the ground lug to the frame with a thread forming screw. Next we install power. Get the three supplied power cables from the kit. At the rear of the E7 shelf at power zone 1, remove the two screws from the A-side power terminals. First, connect the A-side red battery wire to the A-side DC battery terminal. Then connect the A-side black battery return wire to the A-side return terminal. For redundant power to zone 1, repeat the process to connect the B-side battery and return wire. Then, repeat the power input wiring process again to connect redundant power to zones 2 and 3, as shown. When finished, Neatly dress out the power cables to one side of the chassis and secure the cables to the dressing tray with tie wraps. Finally, route and connect the E7 power cables to a negative 48 volt DC power source. Use 30 amp circuit breakers to protect the power circuits. To connect the E7 to an external alarm system or external timing source, you must wire wrap these interfaces at the back of the E7 shelf. The alarm interface pins are located above the zone 3 power terminals. Refer to the label above for pin identification. The timing interface pins are located above the Zone 1 power terminals. Again, refer to the label above for pin identification. For detailed instructions to connect to the alarm or timing interfaces, refer to the E720 installation guide. When you've finished wiring out the rear panel, reattach the plastic safety cover and secure it in place by tightening the thumb screws. To establish a permanent out-of-band management connection to the E7, Calyx recommends using one of the rear Ethernet management ports. Connect the Cat5 Ethernet cable to one of the rear management ports. And connect the other end of the cable to a switch on your local network. Next, we'll install the fan module. 
To install the fan filter, first flip down the retaining door at the bottom front edge of the chassis. Align the filter with the guide rails in the housing and insert the filter into the chassis. Push it all the way into the slot and then flip the retaining door back up. Next, insert the fan module into the E7 chassis and press it all the way into the slot until the latches click into place. Next, we'll install the fiber management comb that sits at the top of the shelf for grooming and routing fibers. First, locate the three screw holes at the upper front edge of the chassis. Get the three supplied screws from the kit and install them into each of the three holes on the front of the chassis, but only to half depth. Position the fiber comb in place with the three keyholes on the back of the comb aligned with the three half installed screws. Press down on the fiber comb to ensure a snug fit and then tighten each of the screws. At this point, E7 chassis installation is complete and you can power up the shelf at any time. At the power source, switch all breakers on to apply power to the E7. The fans will start up immediately. Next, we install the E7 line cards into the chassis. Be sure to wear an ESD wrist strap during installation to protect the equipment from static discharge. Unpack the first SCP card and insert it into the SCP-A slot. Press the card firmly into the slot and then press the two ejector levers into closed position to fully seat the card. Repeat the process to install the second SCP card into slot SCPB. Be sure to latch the ejector levers to fully seat the card. Next, we install the services line cards. Unpack the first card and remove the cover from the backplane interface. Insert the card into slot 1 and push it all the way into the slot. Press the ejector lever into closed position to fully seat the card. Repeat this process to install each additional services line card. We're now ready to install optics modules for the interface ports. For uplink connections, insert 10 gig SFP Plus modules into the 10 gig SFP Plus port sockets on the SCPA and SCPB control cards. For additional uplink or downlink connections, insert 10 gig XFP modules into the XFP sockets. For services connections, insert optics modules into the port sockets on the services line cards. For example, insert GPON OIM modules into the GPON OLT ports. All E720 slots not occupied by a line card should be filled with blank cards to ensure proper cooling and airflow through the chassis. Install blank cards into every empty slot and set aside the rest. The last installation step is to connect fiber. Route fibers to the shelf and connect to each equipped port for local practice. Use Velcro straps to neatly groom and dress out all fibers up through the management comb and out to the far end termination point. At this point, the E720 installation process is complete. To perform initial turn up and commissioning, connect your laptop to the front management port with an Ethernet cable. Log in to the E7 EWI to run the turnip wizard, and off you go. Refer to the E7 user documentation for complete instructions.